This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get awesome, get geeky, talk tech. It's Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here on the Awesome Cast episode 332 here in the Mayhem Studio here in Pittsburgh, PA. You can check into that if you join us here on Facebook and Swarm slash Foursquare. We checked that today. Uh, so please do that. If you if you are visiting, I know a few of you guys come in here as co-hosts, guests, when hopefully maybe there'll be some more opportunities in the future as well. Uh, so... Uh, with me is uh, it's a most uh, mostly in studio day today. First of all, over on the couch is uh, John Chichilla of Big Bank International Incorporated, tucked in the corner there. Sorry about that shot. I must have moved that a little bit. Did you did you just like cuddle into the side or something like I, that? I, I cuddled <laughs> into the side when I got here. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a side. Cuddler. You're marking your territory <laughs> of sorts here. In the studio, oh, in more right? ways than one. Oh boy, <laughs> that's and why I'll, this is my side of the couch. <laughs> also with us is uh, Katie Dudas. She is the social media extraordinaire over at the Scare House. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Great intro. How's your drobos? How's my drobos? If you want to know about my 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 <laughs> dastardly drobo situation, my drobo hell that I live in, make sure. Uh, you awesome casters out there at the five dollar level, uh, check out Awesome Cast Gold. I kind of take a deep dive into that. Although not the greatest place for me to share something like that, where somebody may have tips to help me. <laughs> there's like not as many people are going to see it, but uh, but uh, you can check that out and so much more. And on the line with us from Washington D.C., Ground Zero for I think something's happening there Friday. <laughs> He's <laughs> no nothing at all, right? Uh, is G- TV's Jim Loke? How you doing, man? Good to see you guys. I mean, it's been it's been more than a year because of uh, the new schedule. I mean, I'm a creature of the night now, so I don't get a whole lot of time. Yeah, you're you're running the anchor desk desk down there now, right? I am. I anchor the five and the five o'clock news, and we do a uh, political show at six thirty that I do. So oh, wow. then I got to do. Some- Sports a little bit later on, so I do I do it all here. He was literally on television up until about five till, and then we got him on this thing. So so quite a different, a man of all medias as he usually is. I took the jacket off. You did take the jacket off because <laughs> you know I mean just to you know stay with the style here, right? So thank yeah, you, I, thank you so slum. much. Oh, go ahead. I said slumming it. Slum <laughs> hiding <laughs> hiding in a back room with an iPhone, joining us on Google Hangout. Uh, so <laughs> we really appreciate that. <laughs> um so uh anyways this is the awesome cast like i said please check everything out at awesomecast.net subscribe to the show on stitcher spreaker iheart radio and video versions on the facebook and youtube page a lot going on there the facebook lives are happening over on the awesome cast facebook page as well or we always have that embedded here for the main show at live.awesomecast.net tuesdays around 7 p.m i'm trying to get the stream going a little bit earlier so you guys can settle into it um that you have that uh, we put a little a nice little uh stay tuned tonight's guest kind of screen i feel like the tonight show uh, uh, in a little bit away uh, 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 so uh, uh, we're, we're you know experimenting with that and getting this thing to go a lot smoother um, as well uh, so and, and also please uh, join us please um, um, support the show on patreon patreon.com slash awesome cast uh you can become a, a supporter of the show get the gold like i said including my 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 drobo you can get a nice video of the old uh cluttered set as well not my sweet brick wall that's going on there uh so I, I i just can't figure out my hairstyle either by the looks of things um but anyways please go check that out and you can become a member um we have of course our good friends uh matt weller is upgraded to the new coffee club level that in, includes the awesome cast gold that will be included. He also got whatever mayhem happened uh, last week. What, what did we put up last week for gold? Didn't we? Or, or am I thinking mayhem show where we had that extra stuff when the show went down? Oh, that, was that was mayhem that, that happened. Uh, we should probably share that with Awesome Cats. I think they'd be entertained by that one too. Uh, but anyways, uh, that and of course down at the uh, the the fan of the show level is Mike Fedor. Mike Fedor show on the Twitter. Oh yeah, hey shout outs Matt underscore Weller one T 
over there on the Twitters as well. Uh, I, 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 you kind of reminder, Matt is a, is a man of podcasting as well. He's actually one of the guys that uh, influenced me uh, with the, as part of the Awful Show back in the day. Uh, so big thanks uh, to him for supporting the show here and keeping podcasting going. Uh, also, big shouts to our friends, uh, RiversEdgePGH.com, where uh, Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. after Funny Money, that time is uh, slated to change in the near future. Uh, actually, was Brian was here in the studio this morning. We're talking about some cool things coming up. And as a side note, I've made the River's Edge my, uh, my Uber driving playlist for now uh i figured that was pretty good it'd be a pretty good uh kind of mix of things i'm all, i can't figure out like things that are uh, uh energetic enough for me to stay awake while i'm ubering and won't offend my my passengers so mm-hmm. so now we'll, we'll we'll roll with that and kind of see where it goes so let's get started with our awesome thing of the week i'd like to start this one because there's some okay. big, there's some big news last week um the Nintendo Switch has my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely has my attention. Uh, it was announced, um, and I, I honestly forgot about it until um, like a, probably about 5 till 11. They were doing the presentation live from Japan. And um, uh, voicing over, <laughs> translating on the fly this thing. And uh, it, was, it was a little awkward. It was very Japanese. And uh, the man, they do not have great jokes, and nobody. And I presume it's like pro wrestling, where nobody really responds and applauds um, unless something really, really interesting happens. Uh, so, uh, but no, that was really interesting. So the switch, as we saw, some more details. It's going to come out March third at uh, two hundred ninety nine dollars. It is a portable. It is a console. It comes with a dock. But the biggest thing about Zelda, of course, Zelda's coming out with it, which I think is just amazing. But these Joy-Con com- uh, controllers, Chilla, I, I couldn't wait to get on the line with you to to discuss uh, kind of what these things are about. Uh, it, it, you know, these it's you get two controllers. Um, do, you, do you get? And they're kind of like halves of controllers. Yeah, you get like, but <clears throat> but they're still like you can they're still standalone. So if you can mm-hmm. pull them pull them off from each other, oh the the audio's on there. We'll turn that on. There we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, and they'll, they'll click together and they're one big controller with a bunch of buttons and two joysticks. Um, but then you can kind of break them apart and play Mario Kart together with the two halves, right? But on top of that, they're like Wii remotes that they have the accelerometers and everything. And then on the bottom is an IR sensor that will detect objects to the point where you can play paper, rock, scissors with it. Interesting. That's where I knew you would say interesting. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, it, can it, if it can pick up those types, I wonder if they'll do some stuff with like their little figures and kind of. Well, also, they, they're built in the the detector for the figures, so the okay. amiibos will work with this right off the bat. Um, and uh, they're 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 talking about different play styles that they're doing. They're releasing a a a gunslinger game, and it's like you put the tablet off on the side. You're not even paying attention to the screen. You're just acting out playing a gunslinger game, and it detects whether you actually like pointed at the person and everything, right? If you actually got them, if you pointed at it and, and pulled the trigger, right? Um, and then another one, it's kind of a fighting game called Arms. That again, you, you know, kind of what you you know would hope that you're you're holding both of those because they're they're kind of small, right? They kind of fit in your hand, and you're throwing throwing your fists and everything, and and making moves, and and hopefully delivering that promise of kind of that that fully interactive fighter kind of situation, right? Now, I, I haven't played, I haven't physically played a Nintendo system since the Wii, and one of my complaints about the Wii was. Even when they got to the multiplayer gaming, there was no headset and no chat. Like to play Guitar Hero, I can actually remember calling people like cell phone to cell phone to do it on the side to set yeah. up the game because you had to yeah. type in their player code. I don't know if they've discussed that aspect in particular, but they say there will be an online service. It will be a free online service until the fall, when it'll be a price to be determined and everything. So I mean, it's just going to be like your Xbox Live and your PlayStation. Uh, online and everything like that they also have a smartphone app that'll handle the social aspects the chat the invitations the parental controls and so on which will also be a monthly fee can we do a side awesome thing on the parental controls has everybody seen this video about bowser (laughs) and bowser jr and the parental controls because it's pretty freaking adorable (laughs) so yeah i guess the app will will deal with that and show time but there's an additional fee for the app yeah 
monthly fee well, full access well, that, well that's part of the, like the online thing yeah that makes sense yeah that makes sense as long as it, as long as it's not an additional fee on top of the regular fee it's yeah not, the regular yeah. online fee yeah, yeah. But uh, but I mean, this is really cool to see them kind of getting into this. You know, one the app ecosystem. Obviously, we have like our Mario runs. Uh, I, I wouldn't even count Pokemon Go because it's not really them that does Pokemon Go. It's more of a licensed thing to to Niantic. But uh, it, I, I think you know they're really embracing these, and and there's the Nintendo polish on everything from the looks of things. Um, and and, and I think it may solve a lot of problems. Uh, Jim, have you been uh, taking a look in, uh, on the Nintendo Switch? Has it got you excited to game? You know what? I, so I ended up picking up a... Um, I, I, I lost track of all the developments a couple of years ago, and I kind of got back into it. So I'm, I'm more into the sports gaming. So I, I got a PS4 last year, um, and I've been trying to, trying to use that when I, have my, when, when I have some downtime. I mean, more or less, it, it, it's great to see how they've all moved towards this whole concept of making it really the hub of your... Your, your, your entertainment atmosphere, your ecosphere in your home. But, you know, I still find myself between my PS4, my Apple TV. Uh, I still have a TiVo box because I record off, you know, record over the air TV. Uh, so I still have so many different options there. But, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'll dive in on the Switch. I'll see how it goes first. But I know there's a lot of excitement about it. You know, I think anybody who likes Nintendo, you're really rooting for this to succeed because now the Wii U is just a, a, a massive failure. You want to see them do something to keep them relevant. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, Nintendo, Nintendo is going to have Zelda at launch, which has my excitement because I was there in line on a cold night overnight, three weeks after the Wii came out, trying to get it in Twilight Princess, realizing I never beat Twilight Princess, but still I got to play it. <laughs> uh, I got most of the way through it at least. Um, but, but, but still they're going to have that. They're the Splatoon 2 is supposed to be out in the summer. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which if you didn't pick up on the Wii U, then, then that's cool. Super Mario Odyssey, which amongst other things is going to put Mario in the real world. Like they drop him in New York city, apparently with real normal shaped people of sorts. So, uh, uh, that's got my interest too. It looks like just a Kind of another fun uh, 3D Mario game. And it's nice that we do have at least an announcement of this at launch. We have Zelda and Mario lined up real freaking games at launch. Now they're using a cartridge system of sorts. I think it's going to be like um, the DS, 3DS thing where it's sort of... Um, Oh, we're back. Had a little bit of a technical glitch there. Don't worry, it wasn't the Windows 10 update like it will knock on wood uh, like it was last year for Mayhem or last week for Mayhem Show. So Nintendo Switch, we were talking about. Shelly, you had a question about like kind of the horsepower of this thing. So the horsepower. So yeah, from a horsepower perspective, they're they're saying that it's going to be able to play like the modern day Call of Duty. It's going to yeah. be able to play anything like that, which which I'm 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 hoping to see more around that. The other the other kind of question I had was from a from a gameplay perspective, one of the things that worries me about using a cartridge type system is you get back into the days of having to go to midnight releases, waiting in line, trying to get the, the game the day the day it comes out. That's what Amazon's for. Well, but even, <laughs> even with that, like with with Xbox, you can pre download the game and you can start playing as as soon as it's released. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I worry with the cartridge system. How's that all going to work? So part of it, uh, look, Jim, did you have something you wanted to say there? The whole, the whole concept of pre-ordering and downloading. I mean, it, it, it seems that in some way, I, I think back to 1991, and I don't know how she did it, but I remember all the excitement going up to Super Mario uh, 3 for, 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 uh, for NES. And I just remember getting your hands on that physical cartridge and the weight and the anticipation. And there was so much buzz around it. And granted, this was well before any of us were online, but, but, but you had that, 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 that buzz in your social circles among your friends. I mean, do we, do we lose that? Do we lose the excitement or is it just all about the, is it just about the, the instant gratification? I, I think that's, that's kind of personified in, in online and in, we're talking about on message boards and on our podcasts and, and wherever else. Right. Um, and, and, but we don't have to stand in the court or in the mall at, well, at like two in the morning. Well, what worries me is what happens when you walk into the store. Right. And you, and there's three systems that you can buy with no games. Right. So am I going to buy the system to then keep coming back or keep trying to get the game that I want. So but I have the system. There is digital download. 
Okay. With the Nintendo Switch. Now, the Nintendo Switch is only coming with 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. That is flash storage, of course, a little different than the, the hard drives that are going to be in these other systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the big eye-catching headline was, uh, uh, if you download Zelda, it will take up half the storage on your Switch. Which So, it's it's but, supposedly, it's also going to take SD cards, the little SD cards, the mini micro SD oh, cards. Oh, the micro. Oh yeah, yeah. They were they were showing them off on one of the things, and uh, but yeah, you and that's that's how you're going to manage it now. It, it, remember, this is a portable device. This is an iPad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you talk about power too. Um, it's 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 when you're in tablet mode, it's going to do it at 720, which that's fine for that size of screen and and whatnot. I, Makes sense. I, I mean, it doesn't have to be. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. But if you you put it in the dock, it's going to have a little bit more power going to it, so it can support the full 1080 of going up to an HD screen. Is it that the power's in the, the the tablet portion, or is it that it has discrete graphics in the dock? The, apparently, the dock does not have much except adapters for from <laughs> USB C in the in, in the tablet to HDMI, um, whatever other ports they have going on there. Um, all which it is means that adapter, I can charge it with USB C on the go, which sounds like you can yes. you can do the USB three <laughs> C on the go. go USB C yes. is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Although I feel bad, so LB was down here filming some Sawtooth Willie, and he's like, "Oh, do you have? Uh, I have my phone's about to die." I'm like, "Oh, I'm sure I got something I can plug it into." It's like USB C. I'm like, "Oh, nope, nope, nothing, absolutely <laughs> nothing." Um, but still finding uses for all those Thunderbolt Thunderbolt devices. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, hell, I still use Firewire here and there. But uh, but no, I, I think this this definitely has the buzz around it, and I think it's going to be. Uh, I, I I'm hoping for a Wii style renaissance. That's words that really don't go together. Um, but uh, but again, and also think they're collapsing in two things: the, the mobile that has done very well for them mm-hmm. for years, and they're very basically, and they've done well at it. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely a strength of theirs. Pulling out that, that, that old Nintendo DS was still like, wow, this still feels good, right? After all those years. It's an old, it's a pretty old system, right? At this point. And uh, it's still like the menu system feels like it's got that same... I feel, well, how do I call it? Like a plush feel of the Nintendo menus. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, like, like, oh, this is very Nintendo. And uh, and no, I think it uh, th- they're going to do, do great with something like that. So... All right, let's move on. Some awesome things. I'm sure we'll talk about this a lot as it, it gets closer to release. When is release? Uh, March 3rd. March 3rd will be standing in line. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of shortage. and no, no, Nobody's getting their hands on it until like April at this point because I think it was already... I already saw the article just like I did for the Nintendo Mini that was like, um, 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 well, well, you can't get it here and you're probably going to have not much luck finding it anywhere else. So good luck. Uh, so it shows people want Nintendo things and they've just been waiting for Nintendo to make cool things. Katie, what Hi. is your awesome thing of the week? Well, if it's not porn, it's online dating. Oh, uh, uh, that seems to be my theme what, lately. What are you, what are you trying? Is know. everything okay at home? I don't know. No, I just, it seems like it's <laughs> I all I'm you, at. I noticed you didn't bring him this week. So yeah, he's gone. Oh. <laughs> it's for later. Um, but thanks to Match.com, in where would I go? Uh, you can now drink your date's face on an espresso. It's oh. called a pop-up. It's called Espresso Yourself. <laughs> Jeez. It is a 3D printing cafe to help single folks find oh. love in their latte. <laughs> it's over in the UK. And you get a menu of eight different match members, four male, four female. And you could choose, um, choose one. And then after you pick their face, apparently... Uh, you'll be handed the coffee, and on the side of the cup will be the information about your date. So you can decide whether or not um, there'll be a link on there to decide whether oh, or not you crap. actually want to go out with this person. Oh, it's got a <laughs> the machine looks amazing. <laughs> uh, that's I, the machine looks awesome. Yes, uh, Jim, did you have something to say? No, I, I'm just, I'm just, I, 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 that, that to me is, is borderline stalkerish. So <laughs> I'll... <laughs> you like, and also like, like it, how how well is that picture? You know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like but it looks pretty. I mean, these it, photos, it, it looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Like, I, it's their profile. I want picture. one of these. Like, you could have it at, at the Sugartron Coffee mm-hmm. Meetup. You could print the logo on there. I mean, <laughs> yeah. be I want the machine. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and, and so, it's, so this is a pop up that they're doing somewhere. Yeah, it's only for a few days. Um, okay, 
but uh, they're trying it out. So um, I'm looking up 3D printer espresso machines. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's you can pick a face and drink the face and this, check out the info on the side and decide con- if it's a match. This continues Ooh. to throw me back to like the the um, the old dot matrix printer that came with the Game Boy, a little <laughs> bit, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's great. That's awesome. Uh, Shilla. What's your awesome thing? So my awesome thing is, and I've been really into kind of like your short bite-sized video games that you can quickly fire up, get into, and then get out. Because obviously a, a almost three-year-old running around the house limits some of the gameplay time. Um, but I've been playing Star Wars Force Arena, which was, was recently released. Okay. Um, iOS and Android game. It's kind of like your top-down. Um, it's not turn-based. It's kind of live action. You have two shield generators and three tor- turrets at your, it, to, to protect your base area. Um, and then you have collectible cards. You get like a, a new deck of cards. I think every few hours you can earn additional decks by winning games. Um, you obviously start off with, with your own deck. Um, you don't have to pay any money into it. In fact, I didn't pay any money into it at all. Um, if you joined in, Kind of on the first week, you got additional gifts every day, some additional credit money Mm. um, and some other stuff. But I've just totally fallen in love with this game for the fact that I can drop in. I can get a game spun up in in under 30 seconds. An entire round is about two and a half minutes, depending on how quickly you win or lose. Um, And then you're on your merry way and you can decide if you're addicted and you want to play again and again and again and again, like I kind of do. Um, Or you can put it back down and come back hours later when you'll when you'll get additional cards for your deck. You can level up your stuff. Um, It definitely revolves around the the normalcies of the Star Wars universe dating back to the 1977 stuff all the way up through Rogue One. So some of the stuff's from that Um, just totally immersive, fun fun game it's awesome I, i've been playing like a star wars battlegrounds or something no no that's something else uh but, but something like this that came out like a couple years ago the, and, the card game and no it wasn't a card okay. game it was like a top-down sort of thing like this but it was it seemed just kind of too involved and i and i worry about that when i see like the the, the top-down games like this yeah it's not it's not real involved if you can tap where you want to go um and, and uh, everybody kind of automatically fights and you just kind of pick where they're going. Um, and like I said, it's, it's two minutes. It's, it's pretty easy. You can get into guilds. I think obviously guilds would add a level of complexity and a little level of dedication, depending on your guild. Um, but all in all, it's a, it's, it's, I don't, I don't find it to be that involved. Well, I'm downloading. Here we go. <laughs> and it is, like I said, it is, I know it's available on at least iOS and Android. And yeah. I think it's cross platform play. So you can play against people on the other platforms. Right. And of course, 4 KD, are there at ads? Yeah. I know there's ATSTs. I don't know if there's at ads. There is a Hoth game, like a level. It kind of rotates you around the different planets on the Star Wars universe. There's really nothing special about each one. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just kind of new backgrounds to play on. But yeah. I'm sure it would look beautiful on that on that large iPad Pro <laughs> you have. Pro. Yes. iPad Pro that I'm still trying to wield and figure out here. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Jim Loke. TV's Jim Loke. Copy for an iPad Pro. I'm, I'm, I want to pull the, the trigger on it because I have my puny little, you know, nine inch one here. But um, and, and how often is that phrase said? But uh, mm-hmm. my favorite thing is uh, something called. Uh, so, Realize there's a, there's a war for the data port in your car, and okay. you have all these different companies coming out with different devices. You know, Progressive has the snapshot thing; you plug it in, it measures your driving habits, and, and you could uh, save money. But my favorite thing is automatic. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and and so I, and the, the cool thing about automatic is plugs into your car. There's a new version that has a three G chip built in, so you don't have to sync it up to a phone while you drive. But what I've been able to do is with all the data I've been getting out of out of my automatic. It, it, it uh, comes up with a heat map, really shows you where you're driving the most. Uh, and there's a lot of other apps. It's, it's, it's uh, created a lot of uh, entrepreneurship among developers, finding ways to take simple data like when you start your car, how fast you go, when you brake, and turn it into actual data that you might be able to use um, on, a, on a daily basis. So 
I, I kind of like just the bells and whistles of it. Uh, I plug it in. I never really have to think about it. It's there. Um, I, I can see my roots, my, my mileage of my car. And then the nice thing is if I'm an accident, uh, it, it also uh, automatically calls authorities. So, and I like the fact you pay, I paid 80 bucks for it. There's no monthly fee. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. The, we, I have the generation one still in my car. Uh, although I did get the notice that, uh, it, it, Hey, by the way, Bluetooth may stop working on this thing because like, like, you know, Bluetooth updates and, and they can't update that one and they can't keep up with some of the ways I guess they're using Bluetooth. And they're like, hey, you know, I, I'm supposing depending on what kind of phone I have, it's going to be mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, it, it's going to stop working eventually. Please consider buying a new one. Um, and they do yeah. have $80 for the light one, which doesn't have the 3G ch- chip in it. And the um, do, 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 $130 for the Pro. So yeah, or the Pro. So, which, which I, I like the idea of the of the 3G one, because then you don't have to worry about that, because I'm always wondering, you know, hey, did it sync? Sometimes I don't get the Bluetooth kind of connection going. Again, I do have an older one. Also, I I knocked it out last week, and I was wondering, I'm like, why why is it making that noise I've never heard before? And then I looked, and it, and it was like on the side under the seat, and I'm like, oh, okay, because it's, it's under the dash in my car, mm-hmm. so yeah. you're, you're not going to see it, right? So... That's awesome. Yeah, we, well, I, go ahead. It make, you, you alerts. You know, mine is set whenever I when I hard break, I get a little beep. Yeah. When I go over miles an hour, I get a beep. And and when you forget it's there, and every now and then, like, what the hell is beeping in my car? Then I think like Scott Harbaugh, you know, rigged a car bomb underneath my car. Mm-hmm. It's, try, it's <laughs> trying to do a little automatic. Right. Exactly. I, yeah, nobody's asked about it in my Ubering adventures yet because it definitely beeps yeah. a bit, right? Especially in the hard breaks. Well, it, but, but for you, in your case, if, you, if you're driving Uber, I imagine that's fantastic in that you, you don't even have to think about logging miles if you, if you decide at some point you want to you uh, claim, claim expenses. Oh, absolutely. They, well, they, they made it easy recently um, um, logging in and, or going in and marking things as business. And hold on. I can actually bring yeah. it up in my dashboard. Um, I love looking. And I was actually showing uh, a client that I was asking about the other day because um, you can get a map of where you go. And let's see if I can find one of these good ones from this weekend when I was uh, yeah. dri- driving the drunks home at uh, in the you know in the middle of the night. Let's see, here's a good here's one where I was driving for about 31 miles, and by the way, probably barely left the city limits. Um, but uh, you know, you get an idea of what you drove, what that kind of looks like, and uh, and I think it's kind of interesting because this this is a little bit of a tame one if you guys are on the video. But sometimes it's just like it's the city, and you see me. It looks like I just don't know where the hell I'm going because I'm just ushering people like back and forth across the city in Uber. So uh, it's 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 pretty fun to be able to do that. And and again, for that you want to know, you know, am I really making out well? when I'm doing this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. How much am I spending in gas, right? Like today I knew exactly, like I go to a client cranberries, I turn it on and come back. You know, that's a 30 mile drive. Um, and I'm like, well, did I make my gas back? You know, and you know, <laughs> I could pull right up and say, well, it took me like eh, technically like three bucks to come out here. If I get a ride or two on the way back, boom, we're good. We, we at least broke even on the trip, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's kind of nice to be able to do that. It'll just make sure you don't knock it out of your OBS port. <laughs> That's bad. That's true. true. But, but it lets you know that was amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was great. So it would, be, it would be interesting if Uber would team up with, with one of those or that kind of let you overlay the, the Uber information with the automatic information to then let you kind of easily calculate as well as show you, you know, when I'm in these areas at these times, I'm making a little more money. Certainly. So awesome. So it's automatic. You go to automatic.com. They got the good.com. Uh, and it, it, it's got all of its vowels. I should point that out too <laughs> when we talk about companies like this. So Jim Loke, do you miss the pizza in Pittsburgh? Absolutely. I mean, I got to tell you, uh, when I when I was in Pittsburgh, you have so many, you have so many great options. Um, Boston pizza sucked. Like, honestly, Boston pizza, the only redeeming pizza I encountered in Boston was a place called Regina Pizza, which is a local chain, and, and that's good stuff. Um, the pizza in D.C. is definitely lacking. So I do miss, uh, I, and yet I get to go to Slice on Broadway with you guys. Oh, that needs to happen next time you're in. You got to get in the studio, too, when you're in town. If, if you land here on a Tuesday, man, we got to hook it up. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's that, that in the past, you know, my days off were always Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday. So I had the weirdest weekend, and now I have somewhat of an normal weekend. So it's it's been uh, it's been nice, but it has its drawbacks, uh, I guess. Maybe we'll have to get you down for an awesome chat or something like that. Well, earlier tonight, oh. as usual, we are uh, dropping in, and uh, we're I was kind of stalking the uh, I was kind of stalking uh, the slice on Broadway and the uh, the the pickup. Uh, tonight and showing people the tracks you see there right there there's the tracks on broadway that we talk about all the time for slice on broadway it was very rainy so you couldn't really see that t over there uh but anyways go check them out slice on broadway.com here in beachview down in carnegie pa down on main street and at pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates we were eating at slice friday night and saw an instagram of the uh, tomato sicilian pie at P- PNC Park, that made me. It, it was um. What there's that commercial about? Uh, I think it's the Taco Bell commercial about menu em- envy, where you uh, sit down and you see something that somebody else got and wish you ordered that. I had that through their Instagram, uh, so <laughs> there's they have a lot of stuff. It's great stuff, um, good quality, and they've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for uh, quite a while now. Thank you so much for, to Rico and the guys. So much fun hanging out with them and checking them out. I love, I love if it's not busy. Going up on the second floor here in Beachview and just watching the train go by as we're eating our pizza. It's a, it's good. I love the vibe up there. Uh, so go. Please check it out. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on Twitter. And let them know Awesome Cast sent you. Unlike somebody didn't the other day that picked up pizza. I didn't. Not, no, no, not you. Not you. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> somebody didn't say something when they picked it up. But. You will want to when you when you get that information what's that does it give you a warm feeling in the cockles of your heart when when when, when your name gets thrown around like that <laughs> <laughs> yes i feel it i feel it right here right right in the the chesticles right there all right so anyways um what do we have next to check on uh okay I, I know you got you got to get out of here soon is there any, any anything else uh in the news over the past week, I know CES is uh, well. I guess we're about a week and a half out of it. But uh, but a- anything that that's really got your attention uh, lately that you want to bring up before we let you go? Well, so so obviously we've been talking about what's going on here in DC. This, which you know, uh, we have the big inauguration, and you know, put aside all the politics because it really is it's an historic event to be part of, uh, regardless. But you know, I, I got to tell you what was what I think is is kind of cool is how um, the ACLU is really harnessing the power of, of smartphones social media and we, we did a story on this the other day but they have an app out it's called uh, mobile justice and it's kind of cool in that if you if you decide to go somewhere if you decide to protest if you get involved in something uh this actually live streams um encounters with police right back to your local aclu chapter it streams it in real time uh before you go out you go in and you enter your information and, and, and contact info but, it, but it's it's kind of cool to see um how they're promoting this, especially since we expect to see, you know, tens of thousands of people here, uh, many of whom are going to protest in some way, shape or form over the next couple of days. So, you know, it's all about just being being as well equipped as you can. But I think what's going to be fun to see, regardless if you're protesting or if you're coming to participate, is, uh, uh, you know, the number of places they're advertising, or, you know, just just basic things like cell phone charging. Uh, AT&T came down, they, they, they set up a bunch of temporary towers. So, uh, Hopefully, uh, you won't be for want of a signal around the DC area for the next couple of days. I, I think the video starts right off with the Rodney King video. <laughs> so, so there's your marketing right there. Um, but yeah, well, actually, it's a lot of the ones that you see all over the news in their in their presentation here. So, um, but yeah, go check it out mobilejusticeca.org, uh, uh, and it says it's they have a couple. Oh, so so are they their their location specific, like like state by state? It looks like. Yeah, there's a Pennsylvania one, there's a DC one, there's a Maryland one because they're they're monitored by the individual chapters, mm. uh, and you know it's not not necessarily you know not necessarily um, endorsing you know PLU, but but it but it's they serve a, a legitimate purpose, and I think uh, um, you, you give them credit just for, for for being able to to find technology and use it in a way that that could help help people and you know help support their rights over the next couple of days. Absolutely. So go go find. I guess there's probably a DC one then. Uh, uh. Or, or maybe they'll all kind of cross over whatever one you have on there so go check it out jim loki thank you so much for joining us if well actually we can actually isn't isn't aren't you guys included in that one app we were talking about a while ago that uh no no you're not, not yet you're not you're on news on fantastic 
And I'll tell anybody to, to, if you want to check out, you know, it's it's kind of cool in in situations where you see something happening. For example, right now there was a big man on in Orlando um, for for somebody who shot two shot and killed two police officers. So they caught the they caught the guy about twenty minutes ago, and and I have my iPad right below me here because I'm watching the news on feeds from stations out of Orlando. So it's sort of like being able to have a uh, a whole satellite news you know news organization in your pocket or on your tablet. Um, so it's kind of, even even a lot of local news leaves a lot to be desired. It's kind of fun to, to keep tabs on it. Well, definitely check him out. He's on, uh, like I said, the like we were talking about, the evening over on Fox News DC 5. Did I get all the things? <laughs> uh, what's that? I said it's all there. It's all there. You got it. There you go. At Locay on the Twitter. I think that's public, right? It is. So go hit him up. Thank you so much, Locay, for joining us. See you guys. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. All righty. So now that he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right what else we got going on here uh chilla what, what stories are popping up for you um did you so oddly enough the, the the claim to the stories is that it impacted no one but i guess at&t finally shut down their 2g network um what yeah so so they finally shut down the 2g network that's that, wait that's why okay that makes okay because i was at some place where i had horrible service and i was like i'm and and, and and I didn't even notice that I'm not going to edge before I drop off anymore. Yes. So and that is why. So anyone with an original iPhone can no longer oh, use AT and T. I have an original iPhone. <laughs> but but I was amazed at how many like all the news articles weren't. Oh, they they shut down the two G network. It was all their they disconnected all the 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 first generation iPhones. Mm-hmm. But then as you obviously clickbait. As you read them, they're like, no one really complained. There wasn't many people impacted. Not many people were using Somebody, them. Some hipster out there was really. But like, I, I thought it was interesting. Now, I'm wondering. So so they shut down the 2G network. I'm hoping they expand out and, and kind of reinforce their LTE and, and 4G network. Well, that was the biggest thing was it, it was it was to to kind of have bandwidth opened mm-hmm. up. And and kind of allocate resources, right? Yes. So of course. So we'll see. We'll of see where course. this goes. This will only make our service better, <laughs> right? For free. For f- yeah. Yeah. We're not at no cost. We're not subsidizing subsidizing this at all, right? Yes. I mean, right? And it, I, 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 I'm waiting to see what happens because I I now I, there's a there's a place I go that I get kind of spotty mm-hmm. coverage, and and now every week I just click on the the mark of the spot and and it, i've 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 gotten to the point yeah. where i just say the the network connectivity in this location is horrendous i don't understand why why anyone would you try to use your service if they come here often mm-hmm. etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm i'm a good six months into the complaints and i'm actually increasing them we'll see if we we get some better i need to use that i really need to use that <laughs> i use it a lot yeah and, and i will yeah. say that when i do first for, for Places that I've marked the spot, if they've made tower changes, I have gotten notifications in the app to say we've made a tower change and it, it does impact one of the locations that you marked. Please let us know if it improves the experience. Mm. So so it is. They everybody, obviously are taking it into account. Everybody on AT&T, download Mark the Spot yes. app. I hope there's no other things that come up with that. And I noticed that, so now, too, they have um, the Wi-Fi calling. So you can actually set up the the voice over wi-fi service and then i i noticed with the that service it's supposed to allow you to use other non-cellular devices to take and make phone calls so i'm interested to see what devices that works with and how it works mark the mark spot the spot mark the spot app go check it out katie there's something else that died this week oh r.i.p vine r.i.p vine i know it's so sad i don't i i Guilty of never really getting into Vine, so I can't. I you mean, tried. I watched Vine. You yeah. experimented. Yeah, but I really didn't get into it. Get into it like it. it had t- I think it had taken off to such a point at that time. It was like oh, I'm a. Sometimes I feel like if I get too late, jump on too late with some of the social media platforms, it's just like eh, I've lost my chance you, to really kind of get ingrained with it or, yeah. or something like that, right? So I never really got into it, mm. but it's going away. And um, but Twitter will continue to loop uh, six second videos. So if you post anything six seconds or less, it'll loop it like a Vine. So so basically they're getting rid of the part where it's its own site 
Yeah. And they're just kind of building it into Twitter, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense. And they're sort of kind of doing that with Periscope almost. Like you can at least like watch them through Twitter. Um, but I, I still, you know, I, I, I still don't see much use in Periscope right now versus other platforms like what we use in Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they just couldn't get the, um, like the, the third party and the support behind Vine, like they could everywhere else. So, I mean, mm -hmm. other apps, so it's just eventually it dies off. Well, it's such a weird, it was such a weird thing. And I'm curious, I wish we would have reached out to, um, a friend of the show that was on here talking about, he was really big on Vine. He was doing sponsorships with Disney world on Vine, mm -hmm. uh, Rob Johnston. And, uh, we have a good talk about that. I'd love to see what he's doing. Cause last time I knew he was doing like Instagram stuff. So he's been saying goodbye to Vine for, weeks now <laughs> oh yeah yeah if you if you look on his uh twitter account you'll be able to see his uh vines he even posted one uh not recently where he it was a heartfelt thank you from the bottom of his heart so thank you for watching his vines Aww. and that was uh posted yesterday but he posted some of his best ones and he, he's really gonna miss it <laughs> it's like oh it was a part of him it, it yeah. was a, it was a big kind of creative outlet for him mm -hmm. i know too so uh go go check those out like i said they're well, it's asking me to do sorry i just changed browsers so it's asking me to do stuff like all the time uh <laughs> apparently it's a big security risk over on twitter i guess uh but yeah go go check out what he's doing over there what was this <laughs> thank you every single person who has allowed me to attempt to make smile in six seconds that's good mm -hmm. and giant heart so cute where does he get those wonderful costumes um well you'll still have no not plurk i actually pulled up uh, chachi trying to plug everybody on plurk in like 2012 <laughs> on the mayhem show uh yesterday so brandon out there has been sharing a lot to the facebook group so awesome cast on facebook group please please join us over there uh but uh he he, he says this is the world's uh, uh cutest nightlight and it's mm -hmm. um the elfie uh um apollo box and apparently yeah the nightlight will change colors with an app <laughs> so there you go um you can check out, look up the apollo box on uh, at the apollo box on twitter i'm sorry probably twitter but definitely on facebook where we're viewing this video right here does it so. does it plug in or is it just uh, uh missy have you have you kind of looked at this I wanted to actually make a correction. Mm. The link that he shared to us was through that site, but they actually, it's Emi Global is the company. Oh, okay. And their information is also in, in the doc there. Oh, available on, uh, uh, available on yes. Apollo Box. I'm sorry. I was kind of goofing that up a little bit, but no, go check that out. Thank you, Brandon, for sharing that. And also, as I bring that back up, um, so <laughs> do I have a link to this tweet to bring it up bigger? Uh, probably not. Okay, we'll we'll just pull this up here. So, uh, uh, Patreon supporter uh, Mike Fedor on his Twitter. Remember, he was on the show. We had uh, kind of the Patreon uh, guest host shows, and uh, he says, "Remember when uh, uh, I was guesting your show and told you of the Grizzlies and their taco gear? Well, now they have an emoji, so they're loving that taco emoji. So there you go. Now on the taco emoji, want it? There you go. Uh, also, what's this one? Oh, I'm getting into other stuff. Um, so, uh, anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here? I wanted the Zira until I saw the price. What's the <laughs> What's the Zira? So I think Missy put it in there. It's a it's a um, food recycler, and it kind of autom automates your composting. So I actually compost at home, and we use the tabletop in the kitchen that we we empty quite frequently out out into a compost ball outside that looks like a giant Death Star. Mm -hmm. Um. But this actually is kind of like a machine that you would put your food in. It then grinds it up, kind of turns it into like a soil type material. And then it's in an easy to remove box that you can then kind of take it out and just mm -hmm. fertilize the garden, use it for whatever you want. Um, I would a thousand dollars. I don't know what the going rate for super, kind of super. I need to deck out that kitchen price. Yeah. It's also a Whirlpool product. Missy pointed out. Yes. Why I would be interested in is we don't we actually purposely don't compost as much in the winter time because the compost so ball will with. freeze over. Yeah. It's cold outside. I'm not trudging out in the snow. Mm -hmm. This would actually get me probably doing it year round. Mm -hmm. um, but that that thousand dollar price point and it's going to retail for twelve hundred when it's released. It's actually on Indiegogo right now. Um, 
doing pretty well on Indiegogo at the at the thousand dollar price point, but I don't know. I, hopefully, hopefully this they they can get manufacturing costs down and, and lower the price of the device. But pretty darn cool. Awesome. Also, just a quick rundown of other things that we did not get to that are awesome. You can check out links over on the show notes, linked over at awesomecast.net for this episode 332. Uh, Missy put in their uh, VR machine that lets you uh, know what it feels like to fly. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty much you, you take your VR, mm-hmm. and instead of sitting in something, it's kind of, I thought, akin to the... Uh, I'm blanking on the name of the movie, but it's that Tom Cruise hanging from the the ceiling. You're in a machine that essentially hangs you. All right, this is worth bringing up the video. I I, I was doing quick hits, but this is worth bringing up. This is pretty cool. Check this out. So you're on this thing. Yeah, I I can't even describe that for our audio listeners. No, that's what I'm having a problem with. It looks like a torture device. Yes, it looks like a torture device. I'm going with that. Uh, But (laughs) it's kind of like you're doing a plank. Yeah. But then you're you're on this device that actually allows you to kind of hover it's and holding the you. They're just using the 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 Gear VRs really. Uh, that looks like fun. Uh, you can check out that video and more. Like I said, in the show notes. Also, real real quick, uh, we also have in there. You can take a VR tour of the White House with Barack and Michelle. Uh, there you go. Always have your memories. Uh, mm-hmm. So our wishes, I can tell you uh, uh, when you're about to get sick in advance, I thought were interesting. Um, Polygon uh, received a VCR and a creepy videotape for Resident Evil 7 promos. Um, they had to send them a VCR in order to do it. I think this is the really interesting. And it looks creepy. The pictures in it do look cre- creepy. Uh, Microsoft's new Windows 10 game mode will maximize gaming performance. We'll see how that goes. Also, I don't have much gaming performance on my laptop in general. Um, and a whole bunch of other stuff about Alexa ecosystem uh, and so much more going on there. The plot qubit they talked about on Twig this week about like uh, making a 3D model of your room by measuring it looks really interesting uh, from CES. So go check that out, awesomecast.net. Um, coming up, what's coming up this week? I will be at the Beachview Library. Uh, wait, is it at the bottom? Look at that. Wait, no, oh, no, 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 this is not in the stock. I will do it from memory. I will be at the Beachview Library Wednesday night, 6 p.m. for uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh Boot Camp. I'll be talking about developing your podcast. We've also got coming up next month the... What's next month? It's the app one, right? Yeah, we're talking about... Creating with apps. Creating with apps. So instant... Like using your phone to create content for... Like 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 Adobe Spark. Spark. Yeah. Some fun stuff like that. And then we also have our evening with PodCamp session that we're putting together for next month that is focusing how musicians and people in the music industry, bands, et cetera, et cetera, are using social media to help market. There you go. A lot of stuff going on. Go, go check out all that stuff at podcampispery.com. And, of course, this Sunday is the Sorgatron Media Coffee Club. Coffee? Club? I just added club to it. Uh, it'll be at Work Hard Pittsburgh 1 p.m. Sunday. Join us for that. Free coffee for you guys. And uh, we can talk about podcasting and whatever projects that you guys are working on out there. John Chichilla, how's it going? No, no, no. no. Are we singing the the exit? I do this sometimes. Uh, Where can people find you? What's going on? Um, You can find me Chilla on the Twitters, John Chichilla on the Facebook, Chilla Photo on the DeviantArt. Uh, And I think that's it. There you go. Slicer579 on the AOL Instant (laughs) Messenger. ICQ number, I don't remember. Oh, uh, you don't remember that? 306756. <laughs> Look me up. I don't remember how to log in. Um, I think I think wrestler RJ City tried friending me on ICQ and I couldn't respond, actually. <laughs> so, like like about a year ago. So, uh, Katie. Hi. I'm Kate Hutters some places. And <laughs> Are we still mad at the Scarehouse podcast? No, it, it went up finally. It went up. Yay. Yay technology. The other one's going up tomorrow. That's, that we'll was our goal tomorrow. last week, actually, was the special uh, the podcasty uh, thing. Wasn't it? Didn't I record that? I think I did. You recorded that. Uh, yeah, yeah we end. recorded that. We put up, we put up our little uh, kind of Q&A session. We were working on that. So, uh, but yeah, Scarehouse podcast. Yeah, check it out. Kate Hutters on the Twitter. Stuff and things. Um, you will die with you. On uh, AOL Messenger. <laughs> yeah. Really? Wait, I, I really? Own, yeah, I own that email address. U W I L D I E. Yeah. 
Don't mess with me. You were an interesting <laughs> teenager, weren't oh, you? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's, there's, yeah. Uh, you, the best part was that whenever um, you had to give it to somebody for like official use, like, what's your email address? Oh, you will die at AOL.com. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com. So many shows going on there. And of course, join us live dot awesomecast.net every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll let you know if that changes. Um, because actually we're gonna schedule things. We may have to ship things around here and there. Um, we might have some fun things coming up here. So keep an ear out for that. Thank you so much, producer Missy, helping keep me straight throughout the show. And everybody that joined in the chat room, like Crazy Kraus, like Wheels. And, and the like. So thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. The show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.